The Ahsoka series is out on Disney Plus, and with it come new Lego sets to showcase all the cool characters and ships and everything else we see in that show. One of those ships is called the Ghost, and if you're a super, super cool Star Wars nerd like I am, then you'll have seen this ship many times before in the animated series Star Wars Rebels. If you have a keen eye, then you'll have noticed one huge inaccuracy in the set that I just do not understand. But we'll get into that here in a minute. What's up everyone, my name is Matt and this is my review of LEGO's 2023 Ghost and Phantom 2. This amazing ship is made from 1,394 pieces and will cost you $160 if you're in the US. This is arguably one of the best Star Wars sets released in 2023 and while it may not have the broad appeal of something like the Millennium Falcon, this is an amazing set and I think it's a must have for anyone who loves Star Wars and LEGO. This set comes with five minifigures and we might as well just start from the best and go down from there. General Hera Sandula is the owner and captain of the Ghost and an important character in the Ahsoka series. She looks fantastic and super accurate here with her brown leather flight jacket, her printed orange cargo pants, and a really nice headpiece that represents both her leather helmet and her green leku. Hera's first facial expression is a sort of soft smile and she also comes with a second face showing some seriously angry determination. I wouldn't want to fight her. If we turn her around, we can see the nice printed detail on her leku and the large patch on the back of her printed jacket. If I could change one thing about this minifigure, I think printed arms that included the patches we see on each arm of her leather jacket would have made Hera a 10 out of 10. Jason Sandula is Hera's son and he looks great here with a great chest piece for his sweater and his jacket. Jason comes with a shorter leg mold so he looks appropriate beside his mom and the other characters. The problem with Jason here is that he has green hair both in the animated Rebel series and in the Ahsoka series. So why is his hair brown here? I'm not sure and I don't want to put all the blame on Lego because maybe they were working with concept art and didn't realize their mistake. I don't know, the mold itself looks really good but the color is definitely wrong and I wish it wasn't. Jason comes with two phases. The first is very excited with a big smile. We can see that his second face is still happy but with a little bit of like deviousness mixed in like he's about to do something he knows he shouldn't. Next, let's look at Chopper because he's part of the OG Ghost crew. I think Chopper looks awesome with his detailed printing covering the front of both his head and his chest piece. The white one by one round tile on his head is a reference to his antenna and that works pretty well for me. One of Chopper's legs is supposed to be gray and the other one is supposed to be white, but I don't really blame Lego for picking one color for both and I think the gray was the right choice here and gives everyone's favorite android war criminal a little bit of variety. Oh yes, he is a war criminal. The most impressive part about Chopper though might be that if we turn him around, he has detailed printing on the back of his head and his body too. This looks really, really great and I'm impressed that Lego got these details right and that they just did it at all. It wasn't very long ago that we would never get back printing on these droids. The next two minifigures feel like a little bit of an afterthought or a little bit like the vegetables that come with your steak that you don't really want to eat. We see them both for the first time in episode three of the Ahsoka show, so let's take a look at Lego's versions. First, Officer Hawkins looks pretty good here with accurate chest printing for the brown jacket over his blue collared shirt. His high faded haircut looks pretty good and means that he only gets one calm expression. He should have black boots, but I don't really blame Lego for keeping things simple with this minifig. And if we turn him around, we can see that nice looking printing on the back of his jacket. Lieutenant Beta has really nice looking printing on his chest and on his legs that show us that he's a pilot. All the prints on his flight suit look great and his Mon Calamari head mold is very detailed. It looks perfect, and his back includes some additional printing for his flight vest. I'd like to take just a moment to say thank you so much to everyone who has subscribed in the time that I've had my channel. I try not to include like subscribe messages in my videos very much because I find them to be a little bit cringy. So to know that like 716 of you as of right now have decided to subscribe to me, thank you so much to every single of the 716 of you. It means a lot to me and I appreciate it a lot. The Ghost first appeared in Star Wars Rebels and is a heavily modified cargo ship that belongs to Harris and Dula. The Phantom 2 is the name of the shuttle that sits at the back of the Ghost and it can stay attached like we see most of the time here or it can be removed and flown separately if you want to save on gas. First, I need to tell you there are a lot no. I need to tell you that there are a lot of stickers in this set. If you really take your time and press everything down and line everything up perfectly, the final effect looks great. Just know that there's a lot of them, so take your time. This large sticker for the cockpit was by far the most challenging. I think I would give myself like a 97% if this was a sticker test, but I really wish this piece had been printed and not a sticker. I really love the unique and playful color scheme of the Ghost, with a mostly white body and accent panels in blue-gray and sand green, red, and yellow. Maybe it feels a little bit like Kids Bop, but I think we get enough like gray and dark gray and light gray and brown Star Wars sets that this is a nice breath of fresh air. All the Ahsoka sets actually have kind of a lot of color in them for Star Wars, and I am totally here for it. 
The tops of the Ghost and the Phantom 2 are finished off really well with a mix of tiles and studs that feels complete while still giving that Lego look that you want. All those stickers don't hurt either, I just hope they look as good in 10 years as they do right now because the designers are really leaning hard on these stickers to provide exterior details. One really great technique used on the outside that doesn't involve stickers are these great gray plates that are reversed out here to provide the right texture where the top surface panels interface with the underside. You don't see the underside of LEGO used decoratively very often, and I think it looks perfect here. The Ghost comes with landing gear that's always down in the same way that the Millennium Falcon from a few years ago does, so it looks great on display. There are two moving turrets on the Ghost. The one on top of the ship moves up and down only, but the one at the front of the ship rotates left and right. Moving it around requires moving this Technic bar back and forth on the underside of the ship, and that's slightly awkward to do, but it's a pretty cool play feature and was also actually kind of fun to build. The turret on top has room for one minifigure to operate those guns, but there aren't any studs, so they're just gonna have to like knock around a little bit. This horizontal cockpit can be opened up to place a pilot in there, or the whole front end can be slid forward for better access. There's another set of controls in the bubble turret that are made from an Inquisitor dual lightsaber hilt and two more stickers for the control surfaces in there. When you're sliding it back in, be sure that your guns are pointed straight or it's not gonna go in right and Hera's gonna be mad at you. Now, there's one big problem with the exterior of this ship and that is the color of the thrusters at the back. They look great in this nice metallic blue, but anyone who's seen Star Wars Rebels or the Ahsoka show might remember that these are supposed to be yellow. Lego got this right back in the old Rebels version of this ship from 2014, so there's really no excuse for fumbling such a recognizable aspect of this ship. And don't get me wrong, it's not like the blue thrusters here look bad, they look great. They're just wrong. Aside from the color though, the engines all look great. They're sturdy and detailed, and my favorite part might be the use of this hot dog piece in gray to add texture. The Phantom 2 shuttle is attached by this Technic crossbar and it pulls off pretty easily. Without the Phantom, there's a pretty large gap in the back here that doesn't look amazing, but the Phantom's gonna be in there like 97% of the time, so it's not that big of a deal. The shuttle itself is small, but it looks so good. The scale is perfect in relation to the size of the Ghost and the different types of tiles and construction techniques on the outside help to make the Phantom feel so slick and smooth. It may have nine stickers on it, but the overall look of the Phantom is perfect from every angle. There's even a little compartment at the back to store some binoculars, and the cockpit rotates forward so you can include one minifigure in the pilot seat. Removing the center portion of the top reveals a modest but welcome interior with two doorways highlighted by a black and yellow caution plates, and those translate to airlock and orbesh. There wasn't room to include a ramp in the very front below the bubble turret where it's supposed to be, but these two side ramps add a bit of playability and fun to the set, so I'll give it a pass. On one side, there's another control console, and on the other side, there's a sink with a faucet up near the cockpit and a container beside it, and what's in that container? It's this, not a carrot. It's a maileron fruit. Mailuron, Mailuron. You know, it's one of Harris and Dula's favorite foods and it first appeared in Star Wars Rebels Season 1, Episode 4, I Am the Nerdiest of the Nerds. This is a really great little Easter egg, I love it, and it just makes me all the more confused about why they used blue instead of orange or yellow on the back of the engines. Like, I don't understand. Maybe an intern brought over from LEGO Friends? Lastly, the Ghost includes two flick fire missiles to launch at your brother or your sister or your cat or whatever. Look, the set isn't perfect, but it's really, 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 really good. It looks great on display, it's packed with play features, the colors look really nice and are a nice change from what we see from every other Star Wars set. It includes a couple new minifigures and it's a vast improvement from the last time we saw the set in 2014. Later, nerds!